What's up, everyone? This is J Bone and Dizzy. Welcome back, everyone. This is the J Bone and Dizzy show. Um, man, this <laughs> this is like extremely late at night, and we just got done a few hours ago doing the Rambling About Wrestling podcast. Yeah, uh, talking about. Um, Survivor Series and a follow up from that, the Raw the night after, mm-hmm. and we wrapped up our conversation. And I'm just I'm putzing on Facebook. I'm playing my games. I'm reading through news, seeing if there's anything new over over the night. And there was a few things here and there. And then as I'm going through um, some of the fan pages, like the No DQ and the Solomon Monster and stuff like that. All of a sudden, I come across a really weird post. Something about <laughs> CM Punk being in a podcast. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Yeah. And I read further into it. And sure as shit, it's CM Punk is going to be in Cold Cabana's podcast. And that is very believable. But I went on Twitter. I looked at the Twitter post. Mm-hmm. And you look further down this post that this I can't remember the guy that did it that got a lot of attention that that threw it out there. Cole Cabana basically denied it. So I start like looking all over the place for Cole Cabana's page. Yeah. And then sure enough, I found it. And I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Punk actually came out into the public and yeah. and just dumped you know, almost two hours worth of him um, and Cabana talking. Yeah, him and Cabana just letting it all out there, talking yeah. about what happened over the last few years. Yeah. So that's so I I let Dizzy know, and I'm like, dude, we need to jump on this because yeah. this is this is huge. I mean, we did this last week, and we were mm-hmm. all excited when the Sting news broke. And okay, this is this is gonna make the sting news like it's gonna crush it. Yeah. I mean, you told me about this. And I was just sitting, you know, I was just uh putzing around, like you said, like you what you were doing, just putzing around on Facebook. I was actually getting ready to watch the network, you know, just a couple of old Raws. And you said, Holy crap, CM Punk is on Cole Cabana. I'm like Eh, do I want to listen to it or not? So I tried to get on my phone. It was really crappy on my phone because the player just kept stopping and I had to keep it lit. And I'm just like, I'm not doing that. So then you were like, go get your laptop, do it. (laughs) I'm like, I don't really want to go waste the energy to go downstairs to get my laptop, bring it back up and listen to it. But I'm, like, oh, I'm sitting do it. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm listening. I'm you know, I'm on my couch. I'm ignoring Jason. And, <laughs> and uh it's something inside me, I'm just like, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go get the laptop. So I bring the laptop upstairs, I listen to it, and I'm really glad I did because it shed a whole new light. On this whole situation, everybody talks crap about CM Punk leaving the WWE, and I, I've been a Punk supporter. You oh, know, we talk on the sh- yeah, we, I mean, we, yeah, I mean, we talk on the show. I don't know, Bubba talks major shit about CM Punk leaving or quitting the WWE, and I'm like. Dude, do you know what these people have to go through? You know, so I'm really happy that I listened to it. I'm forcing Bubba to listen to this. I'm forcing Max to listen to this. I'm forcing jo- uh, Baron to listen to this. I'm forcing everybody on the crew to listen to this. Okay. And we are going to talk about this because I have a bunch of points that I want to bring up, and I know you do too. Yeah, I've, I, I I didn't probably didn't cover quite as much. I had more fun just listening to it and just sitting there like, <laughs> right, right. Like, oh yeah. my God! You know, I mean, right. but I wrote down a few bullet points. You probably have a, a few more detailed notes than I do. I um, took everything that he said verbatim, so that nothing goes. When this video posts on YouTube, nothing goes like nothing is is uh, 
nothing is misquoted wrong. I wanted everything to be quoted from and you, punk. And you can help me on that. I've just got like, just like main bullet points. Like, okay, they talked about this. They talked about this. They talked about this. Right. If our information matches, then I can help you. Okay. Um, so yeah, just the fact that he came out and did this is <clears throat> in my opinion, earth shattering. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, this is going to, I mean, I, I was excited about this and I was hoping because Paul Heyman came out a few months ago and talked about, and I covered this in one of my videos on my channel too. And Paul Heyman talked about, he just came, he covered everything that was in this interview, but he just covered it real um, vague, real vague. Yeah. yeah. He talked about his health being an issue. <clears throat> he was tired. And that's for it. That's true. And that he just, he knew he couldn't perform to the standards that he wanted to. That's he true too. Put, he could not put 100% into what he does. He takes a lot of pride in his work. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter who he's on in the show, that's going to be like the match of the night. He'll make, you know, he. <laughs> Oh my God. When he was talking about Ryback, he's like, you know, yeah. Hey, I don't care. I'll, we'll make it the match of the night. And it's just, yeah. <sighs> yeah. And we'll, we'll touch on Ryback because that, I mean, we all know Ryback sucks as a wrestler. Um, he's not the greatest, um, but he does touch a lot on Ryback and he has no qualms with the guy. Yeah. It's just the guy can't really wrestle. Yeah, so, you know, and he, he, you know, people are going to say, oh, you know, it's, it's his fault. He botched. And it's like, okay, well, he, mm -hmm. he you've got a guy that's twice Punk's size pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, that right there is going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, I, and I don't, I don't hate him. It's just, he's just doesn't have the experience that Punk does. Punk is. Yeah. Punk is a veteran. Whether you love him or hate him, he's a vet. He knows what he knows what he's doing. Yeah, like you know, he said uh, <clears throat> he worked a match with uh, Ryback, and Ryback actually kicked him in the ribs and broke his ribs. And you know, he never received an apology from him. Yeah. He also went on to say that you know he got out of surgery. Uh, I think he said for his knee and Vince McMahon called him and said that he wants him to wrestle Ryback uh, or he was wrestling Ryback. He was already booked for that match and a TLC match on raw in like two or two and a half weeks. This is right after he got out of surgery. Yeah. He said he didn't want to do it, but Vince, um, as you know, he said numerous times, I'll owe you one. So he did it. Yeah, and, he did it for the sake of the business and for yeah, the, and, it, yeah, and I mean he he got he got dropped through a table. He was supposed to get dropped through a table, but Ryback completely misses the table, and you know, CM Punk goes on the concrete floor like his head bounces off the concrete floor. Yeah, I remember watching that live. And yeah, just you know, I think everybody who watched that just cringed like, mm -hmm. oh, that. That couldn't be good for him, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it looked very, very painful. Um, another another one of his qualms that I, I wanted to bring up is that uh, he, he kept bringing up ideas. He kept bringing ideas to the table, and they oh, would yes. consistently shoot him down. But then weeks down the road, they would give these ideas to John Cena, and he'd be doing them out in the ring, like weeks later. Yeah. He, in the same fact, he talked about the whole um, sponsorship thing. Yes. And all of a sudden, a little bit later, who came back and was doing the sponsorship stuff on his pants mm -hmm. or shorts? Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Yes. So, you know, so that was another thing where it's like, it's, it's just stacking over the course of mm -hmm. the last two years since he yeah. resigned. Yeah, uh, here's not not re, not re, re signed. He, he got fired. He got <laughs> no, fired. I, I'm talking about um, when he re signed. When oh, yeah, when he re signed his contract. Yes, after yeah. The pipe bomb and all that. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah. just after that, it was like, hey, all right, I want this, I want this, and I want this. And they're like, yeah, boom, you got it. You know, and and yeah, there were certain things I think that he did get that did help him with the, mm-hmm. um, that helped him last as long as he did that certainly extended his career like you know the bus and stuff like that transportation so we can yeah. rest properly and not be crunched up in a flipping car with someone else mm-hmm. um but i don't want to focus on all the negative because yes there, this was he's like you know like he didn't want to do this as in i hate the wwe he was just clearing yeah. his plate Right, and, and even though there was a lot of negative, I want to cover just a few positive things. One thing, and it, it shows how how good and how smart he is. You know, when it was talking about uh, dropping the title to The Rock, yeah, and then he wanted they wanted to uh, put him <laughs> with a new stable, mm-hmm. and they told him the Big Show and Daniel Bryan and. I think someone uh, else. Here, I got it right here. It was it was uh, the big show. I'm still looking for it. Uh, well, shit, I can't find it right now. Hang on. I'm. Well, oh yeah, he said that um, uh, their idea for a stable for him was the big show, Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins, or the guy from FCW. He said that. Right. Yeah. He didn't like it, so he pitched the idea. He pitched idea after idea, and finally they agreed. He went to Vince with his idea for a heel stable, and he said Rollins, Ambrose, and Chris Hero. Hunter shut down. Yeah, Hunter shut shot down uh, Hero for Roman Reigns. They didn't like his ideas, and they had their own idea to make uh, them look good from what he said, and basically. That's how the shield was born, and basically the shield was his idea. Yeah, and it just shows you. It's like, oh, my God, yeah, it's – It course. just goes to show you how smart CM Punk is when it comes to the wrestling industry. It really shows you how smart – because he can go from his character – and he can build other people around his character, and then he can make a brand new faction that doesn't even involve CM Punk, and they can go on to do big, big things. You know? Yeah. And, and, and another positive thing that, that I would like to point out, too, is that he never wanted to wrestle Ryback. You know who he wanted to wrestle? He wanted to wrestle Kurt Axel, Curtis Axel. He wanted to wrestle him. And he he said, I, I want I want to help push him. I want to help build his career. And yeah. he never got the chance. And I thought that was kind of crap. Yeah, it's there's just so so many things. So many things, yeah. And, um and now to go back to like the uh the injuries um uh, mm-hmm. the injuries that were mounting. Um what what blew me away and uh, fill fill in the blanks here wherever you want to, dude. Because like I said, I know mm-hmm. you, you took more notes than I did. Because I was just <laughs> yeah, um, like the thing with his back, the yes, the, what what ended up being a staph infection, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, you can't, and and I can relate to this on some level. Yeah, they were just giving him, and I can't remember what the heck they called it. it was some they called the they they kept giving the doctors. Okay, so he he wound up with this this uh, lump about the size he said of a baseball on yeah. the on his back where his tights meet, yeah. and he kept going to the doctors. Doctors said, you know what? It's probably just a calcium buildup. We'll just give you a Z pack. You'll be on your way. Z pack. That's what they call yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's and, just a simple antibiotic. Yes, yeah, it's just a simple antibiotic that that clears up some things. Yeah, um, I I can tell now, you from personal experience. I was mm-hmm. down three quarters of this year with a rare pneumonia, mm-hmm. and if they would have given me just you know Z pack after Z pack after yeah, Z pack, I I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I would be six right. feet under. I had right. this, I had the specialist from Wisconsin. 
given me the medicine I needed for like three months straight mm-hmm. so I could recuperate. And it finally, my lungs healed up. They're a hundred. Well, they'll never be a hundred percent, but you know, the, the infection has right. gone, the toxic, you know, hole in my lung was healed up. Everything was healed up, but that's the thing. Yeah. You have to have a specific yeah. medicine for something that's serious. You can't just, Oh, well, you have a migraine. Oh, here's a baby Tylenol. No, it ain't going to work. dude. <laughs> right. And, and here's the thing too. The doctors in the WWE kept telling them, well, you know, I will give you the Z pack. And he continuously told them, cut it off, cut it off, cut it off. Even after his re- match in the Royal Rumble, you know, he walked back to the backstage. Doc asked him if he was okay. And he said, this thing hurts. It's the size of probably a softball by now. I want you to cut it out. And he says, well, we can't really cut it out because you have a match at on, on Raw on Monday. And we'll just give you a Z-Pack. And he said, bullshit, I don't want a Z-Pack. So, yeah, but, finally. By, by this point, yeah, he's got that. He's got yeah. the torn. He's got the messed up elbow. He's got yeah. the ribs. He's mm-hmm. got the messed up His, knee. His knee, yeah. All, all these things. Yeah. All and, these things just compile just up into them. one. And pushing yeah. them. And pushing them. Yeah. And, um. You know, he, he finally, after he, um, I think it was before, I think he said before he left the WWE, he went to the doctor. His wife, uh, AJ Lee, actually sent him to a doctor, uh, her doctor, and he said, okay, you know, what the hell is wrong with me? And the doc says, well, you have a staph infection. And he said, this is a staph infection that could kill you. If you would have put it off any longer, it would have killed you. Yeah. You know, so you can't mess with that. Yeah. You can't mess with that kind of stuff. So, you know, he, he, you know, just like he said, he had a staph infection on top of that, a broken elbow on top of that, an injured knee on top of that broken ribs. It was just, it was bad. And Vince kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And he says, you know what? I'll owe you one, pal. I'll owe you one, you yeah. know, and it's, it's just like, whoa, you know. And then finally when he walked out, you know, when he had his, you know, they had the, the straw that broke the camel's back and he walked. Then mm-hmm. there was all the the legal money issues, which we found out now that all, I'm not going to get into all the details of that. But, you know, when you heard about, it did break in the news about that, oh, excuse me, that 15 page letter that Vince, oh, that Vince, that CM Punk sent to the WWE. Mm-hmm. basically outlining everything that a they owed him and b mm-hmm. because of 2k15 you know <laughs> he was like oh uh, i'll take that one too and it's yeah. like he's like you uh, idiots <laughs> yeah i mean after you're after you're done watching this video i will talk to anybody who's watching this video right now after you're done i want j bone if you would so kindly Post the link to the CM Punk interview and let people listen to this because this will, I hope, give everybody a brand new light on CM Punk and maybe they will not talk so much trash about him. Here's something else that I wanted to bring up too. He said that he did a ton of Make-A-Wish you know what John Cena does? Yeah, he said he did a lot of John's, uh, a lot of Make a Wish, yeah. and he sounded kind of upset that when he did all these Make a Wish, he never got advertised for it. But when other wrestlers did it, I think he said Orton and obviously Cena, they got the hype for it. Yeah, they you know, get the, uh, yeah, it it was just in the news again within the mm-hmm. last week. I don't remember what day it was. Oh, Cena did 400. I mean, he mm-hmm. broke the record for the 300 Make-A-Wish things. Oh, now he did 400. Yeah, and if you talk to, if you talk, we've had one of the guys on um, on the show on Rambling About Wrestling. Uh, his name is Barr, and uh, we he told us about a time where he called John Cena to visit a sick kid, and Cena said, well, I'll do it for this amount of money. And he's like, well, you know, we can't pay you for this amount of money. And John Cena was basically a prick. Wow. 
Whoa. Yeah. So it just goes to show you the the level where CM Punk is. CM Punk's a good dude. He 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 said at the end of the podcast, he said, you know, him and his wife went to a Blackhawks game. Oh, this and- th- this yeah, this covers the whole thing that was recently in the news about oh, he was crappy to a fan at a hockey game. And here's how the fan asked him, or here's how the fan reacted with him. They were in the line for the concessions. They were get, buying their food. They had a bunch of food in their hands. They had to pay cash because the credit card machine was broken. Yep. So they were waiting in line. A fan said, hey, Phil, hey, Phil, can I get a picture? He said, no, fuck you because you're rude. That's Basically, his words. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, it's like, and he even said, he's like, if you're nice, if you respect yeah. me, I'll respect you back. There were, mm-hmm. he said, I believe, four other people that asked him that night for autographs or pictures, and they were kind. They were respectful. Yeah. But here's how they approached him. He said, hey, I'm a huge punk. I'm a huge fan of you, punk. My name is blah, 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 and I, I've been a fan of you ever since, blah, blah, blah. I'd really, really like a picture with you. He yeah, would say, could- cool. Could I please? You know, please yes, goes a could long way. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, <clears throat> this guy would, and, you know, and the fans, it, it's it's crazy how he would go on Twitter and, and people would say, you know, I bought you this house. I <laughs> bought you this house. And, and I'm like, how? Buying his merchandise? I mean, you do realize that, the WWE saw a hell of a lot more money than Punk did for his merch. He only saw a fraction of whatever the WWE made off of his shirts, DVDs, oh, posters, course. whatever, whatever it T-shirts, may be. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever the case may be, he only saw a fraction of whatever the WWE made. So how can you say that you bought his house? Exactly. How can you say that? Yeah. I mean, did the fans contribute to it? Yeah. But you know, to mm. outright say, Oh, well, you know, I bought your house. No, no yeah. you didn't. No. He, right. He earned – CM Punk has earned everything that he's got. You know, And he's a smart guy. He saves his money. Yeah. He saves his money. He even he said looked at his it, bank account. Yeah, he said, in his, he said he looked at his bank account and said, well, what am I worried about? I can go work for Starbucks. At least I'll get insurance. Right? You know? And, and – and and, one other thing they touched on in, in the thing was, um, you know, after he left with the whole no compete clause, <laughs> yeah. the big thing was, well, actually two things. One was obviously, you know, what they consider, you know, competition is mm-hmm. TNA. Mm-hmm. So, and he's like, I, I, I would never go to TNA, you know? Right. And right. <laughs> let me tell you, as, as he was like, you know, leading into that, I was on the edge of my seat for that one because, you know, mm-hmm. there were rumblings about, oh, well, they contacted him and he didn't want to do it. You you wanted He's... to hear it from him, you know, yeah. if they really if they really did. The other thing is um, you know, how they say, oh, the UFC is in competition. They gave him a no compete clause for the UFC for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, for the UFC. That was and, hilarious. And, yeah, I'm like the UFC. This guy just got his ass whooped in every single match that you put him in with Ryback, and God knows how many other times he got his ass whooped, but mainly Ryback. And you want and you're worried about him going to the UFC? He's yeah. done. Yeah, he's done with anything professional wrestling, professional fighting. He's done. Yeah. He doesn't want to do that. He trains to stay in shape now to take care of himself. And yeah. I think it's more of a, I don't want to say DDP yoga thing, but for lack of better words. He does jujitsu. Right. Yeah. With the Gracies and like that video that just came out recently, which like yeah. made a lot of, you know. Got a lot of hype because it's CM Punk. Yeah. And he was wrestling and it was like oh my god it was so refreshing to see him you know do that and it, you know it made you wonder why is he doing that well yeah it's not anything for competition it's him for the love of just of what he wants to do yeah just just whatever he sh- wants to do just staying yeah. in shape and that's what he's doing yeah. now 
You know, yeah. he's writing a freaking comic book for crying out loud. He's doing things that, I mean, he's a big nerd when it comes to that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> Another thing I wanted to touch on is he said he, he calls the WWE and any public trading company bipolar. And here's the reason why. He said, because they want you to be this character 24-7. But if you're caught being someone or being mean to someone on Twitter, they will admonish you. Meaning, I assume they will penalize you and make you look like a terrible person or an asshole. Um, you know, they, they like they told him, like he went to a, uh, he was on SmackDown and he was on all these antibiotics like we, you know, we talked about before, yes. he was on all these antibiotics, and he was on SmackDown, and he was he was having you know bathroom issues, and he actually shat his pants. Yeah. So he tweeted, he's like, "Hey, everybody, watch SmackDown tonight, Friday on uh, Sci-Fi. I just shit my pants." Yeah. And the WWE asked him to take it down. Yeah, they're, they're like, like oh, "Well, you you can't you, say that," and he's like, "You can't really? say shit." He's yeah. like, "He's like, this is a, a funny thing. I'm making fun of myself here." Yeah, you know, and, and they're you're like, "Well, you can't say the word shit." So, so he he retweeted, <laughs> "This poop ain't fun anymore." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and not only that, but he unfollowed the WWE and he blocked them on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, he blocked it, them. So that was the start of that. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, "This isn't fun anymore," you know. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> So, you know, he's dealing with, he's finally, <coughs> I'm sorry, guys, this is late and my voice yeah. is going, um, uh. trying to get through this. <laughs> he's finally dealing with all of his injuries, you know, and, and, and starting to really get the rest, take care of himself. He took care of the staph infection, all this stuff. And he then comes to find out that he was uh, suspended. Right, mm-hmm. mm, he was. Uh, you mean on his wedding day? Well, no, no. On his wedding day, he was fired. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. He was suspended. Yes, he was. They, they suspended him. Like it wasn't long after he walked. It was like within yeah. a couple months of that or something. And the yeah. end of his suspension was like right around WrestleMania. So mm-hmm. then he was waiting for some kind of okay. Now what are we going to do? Because I think at that point, as as fried as he was, he was resting, and I think he probably still had it in himself to go back to him. Mm-hmm. But then it just got uglier after that. They sent him the the papers on his wedding day that he was fired, and he was yep. like, and that was that was the straw. That's the that broke the camel's back. That broke yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was it. That was, there were certain, certain, like you said, certain things you do that he just kind of was like, okay, whatever. I can let that go, shake it off or, you know, dust it off. But this one Mm -hmm. was like, oh no, that's, that's it. And the thing about it is he, he claimed that the WWE was just a pit stop for him. He wanted to be happy, but he wasn't happy in the WWE because of everything that was going on and you know how they treated him. And I assume other wrestlers that didn't follow suit like John Cena or anyone else, because John Cena is the yes man for the WWE, and CM Punk was always the rebel. Yeah. You know, so whenever he felt something was wrong, he said, "No, whoa, wait a second, hold on, something's not right here. Something doesn't add up." Oh yeah, he he spoke up for himself. Yeah. He yeah. Didn't, uh, didn't just always do it. I mean, yeah, there were certain things he did that he is, you know, that he even said. That yeah. he looks back on it and okay, I, I shouldn't have done that, you know. When he kept yeah. on giving in and giving in and giving in. Yeah, here's here's one thing you mentioned WrestleMania, and then we talked about um, you know him getting fired and you know him not ever receiving any kind of royalty checks or anything like that. I don't think we touched on that yet. But the thing is, he In said the money part. Yeah, yeah, the money part. He said. He he asked people regarding the WWE Network. He said, "Hey, so WrestleMania is like seventy bucks on pay per view, but you're selling it on the network for nine ninety nine, and 
he felt that he would get punished by asking how they would pay him for a WrestleMania appearance or match if the viewer is only paying $9.99 a month since, you know, Colt Cabana said that it's the only game in town, which technically it is because TNA is not going to compete with them. No. So, yeah, WWE is really honestly the only game in town. And that's what I've that's what I've complained about in the last few uh, rambling about wrestling shows is that the WWE network is charging you 9.99 a month a month for every single pay-per-view that includes WrestleMania that's usually 70 80 bucks on pay-per-view. Yeah. You're really going to screw your people over by selling the pay-per-view for 9.99 when you could go to any other cable company and offer them this this product that you've held on many other you know nights many other times yeah for 70 80 dollars yeah it's crazy it's the last it's, time they were in hollywood 83 bucks for wrestlemania yeah for hollywood and it's a slap in the face to the workers. It really is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it I is. don't know what the hell they're all earning, and we probably never will know. But no. But you know, another thing on the money was, you know, how much he knew he was getting paid, not even close to what other guys like The Rock, Lesnar, Cena, Taker. Yep. You know, he listed Any off part timer. Part timer. He had huge problems with part timers. Yeah. And he, he I'll tell you what he said. Let me let me let me look for that. Uh he said um He was talking to Triple H about it. Yeah, let me I think it was one let me, of the, let me find that. It was one let of the me, last arguments find. that he had in their office when he was just going down the list of stuff the day before he He's, walked out. He said he was supposed to wrestle Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. He said, great, who's going over? Then said Brock. Punk said, great, who's going to be at work Monday? Vince said, well, you are. He said, why? He asked about a rematch. Vince said, no. He said when, he asked when Brock would return, and Vince said, well, Royal, Royal Rumble. He said, so he had to put over Rock. Undertaker and Brock, which are all part timers now, yeah. he wanted to be a part timer, but Vince wouldn't let him. He wanted to work him a John Cena schedule because apparently everybody in the industry is a super Cena, and he he doesn't want any part timers that are red hot. Well, isn't Taker red hot? Isn't Rock red hot? Isn't Brock red hot? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. No. It doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make any sense. I I'd, mean, let's say, well, now that Taker's, now that Taker's defeated, you mm-hmm. know, he people, some people may not consider him quite as red hot, but um, the Rock I, is. People don't. Rock Lesnar is. People don't look down on Taker for losing. At no. least I'm assuming majority of fans do not. They're not gonna. They're not going to shit on Taker for, oh, he lost at WrestleMania. He's stupid now. No, mm-hmm. fans aren't going to do that. No. No. Uh, he, uh, there's, a, there's another point that I wanted to make up, or that I wanted to bring up, rather. Um <laughs> This is not Make made up. up. This is not made up. No, the, the link will be in the description, people. I'll find it. Um, it's, it's on Colt Cabana's uh, podcast page. I, I'll, yeah. I'll find the link. But yeah, he brought he brought up the NFL. Um, and the reason he brought up the NFL because in the NFL there is a union, and how they're getting just massacred or raped. Because the union, I'm talking about the WWE superstars, but the union makes the NFL pay them. They say, hey, you need to pay these guys this much money for current and past injuries, and the NFL is doing it because they have to, and Vince doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to go union. 
He doesn't want to do that because that's just more money that he's going to have to shell out for these these superstars that are actually injured and they're not getting any work. They're not getting any money. They're not getting paid for their injuries. Yeah. You know, they're not getting workman's comp. That's not like a job that you and I have where if we get injured at work, we get paid for our time off. If it happened at work, which everything that a WWE superstar does, if they're injured, it happens at work. If we're at work and we get injured, we get paid. Yeah. Not only do we get paid, but our insurance takes care of all of our hospital bills for us. We still receive a check in the mail, or we look at our bank account and we get paid. The superstars don't get paid. They yeah. work. Whatever match they work, they get paid for that match, and that's it. Yeah. And you know. so many times these guys, just because of their situation and the money they are earning, they'll work injured because they don't have a lot of choices out there. Right, exactly. There's you know, not a lot of people that, I mean, yeah. what are they going to do? Go act? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and yes, yeah, some have gone off and been successful, but it's, you mm -hmm. know, the, the list is few and far between. So, yeah, I mean, this this podcast of Punk going through all these things. I mean, hell, the one, oh, the one thing I don't think we touched on, because we talked about the knee, the elbow, he had eye surgery. And yeah. They wanted, they wanted him to wrestle, like, the next day after eye surgery, it's like, and he's freaking, and he kidding. said, and you know what? He said, cool. Just as so long as nobody goes out there and touches my eye. And I forgot who he said he was in a match with that touched his eye. Oh, it was during the Nexus. It was Nexus. It was, it was Ryback uh, again. <laughs> oh, was it Ryback? Well, he said Reeves. That's Ryback. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Nexus, wasn't it? Wasn't yeah. it when Nexus? Yeah. Nexus was, they debuted, and Punk was with uh, uh, Straight Edge Society. Gallows, yeah. Gallows. And, and <laughs> he told Gallows, he's like, just kick their ass or something. Yeah, he's like, he's like, what do we do? He's like, just kick their ass. Yeah. You know, just kick their ass. So that's what they had to do. Yeah. Punk was pissed about that. He was super pissed. Yeah. So. But he, he, he goes on. He, another thing is. He says that they they never knew what was next for who. Oh, he said the, Vince the, the planning, yeah, the planning is yeah, horrible. Yeah, he that, said that's evident like every week in the news. It's like, oh, yeah. well, they were like re rewriting the show while the show was live. Yeah, you know, and this like, is just more evidence of that. Yeah, and he said like Vince would call and say, "Well, what's next for Cena? What's next for Punk?" and that's, he said that's the wrong way to do business. Check this out. 26 writers for the show, and they don't know what's next for anyone. It didn't now, – now, Jason, let me ask you this. Didn't Vince Russo and the other guy that he wrote with when he sat in a room for him with him for months writing up stories, didn't they write stories out for months ahead? Ed Ferreira, yeah, they said it was those two sitting in a room watching Jerry yes. Springer, and they'd write up the shows for um, I assume months and months ahead, so that they were at least ahead, right? Yeah, and it was just, and yeah. that's the thing. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, twenty, thirty guys bouncing ideas off of each other. You had two guys, you know, bouncing ideas off of each other yeah. and getting it done, you know, and that's and why. NXT mm -hmm. runs so damn smooth, and yeah. it's the best thing on the network, whether you're and a nostalgia I, guy or not. Yeah, and I know that Vince Russo is a bad way to bring up story writers because of the whole poll thing. Yes, people are going to say about the poll matches, oh, God, he, he recycled poll matches. But if you can sit there and bounce off, like if me and Jason – if me and you can sit back and forth and just go back and forth between, okay, well, what can we do? And we bounce ideas off of each other. Couldn't we have a bunch of storylines and something new and something that's not been recycled? And then later on, we can maybe go back and recycle whatever we use, like, I don't know, a few months, like months and months behind. And we can recycle those and say, okay, let's bring this back. Yeah. But let's give it a twist. Right. 
Yeah, a different group, different, you know, a, another twist, and it, it would be similar, but yeah, because it's always, it, you're always going to have the constant, you know, good versus evil. Yes. It's trying to come up with the original thing, like, oh, okay, well, let's, um, you know, let's let's put them in uh, um, a funeral home, and, and yeah, no, well, let's not do that. <laughs> no. Yeah, right. Let's put them in a funeral home, and somebody gets put in a casket. Wait, no, that's been done before, just not the funeral home. Katie Vick. <laughs> Katie Vick. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, they they said that he said that they wanted to turn him heel. He never wanted to turn heel. He said Rock was on his way back, and he wanted to work with a bad guy. He wanted to work. He, you know, Punk wanted to work with the Rock, but that meant Punk had to turn heel, and that meant that there was a downward spiral on his on his sales, on his merch sales. And he yeah. says, "Okay." Vince says, "If you do this again, I will owe you one." He turns heel. He starts getting super beat up. He kept asking what was going on with Mania, and Vince kept telling him the rematch for. Uh, it was, or Vince told him that you know while he was working as a heel, Vince told him that it was the rematch for Cena and The Rock, and he pitched different ideas, and he was obviously in the match with Taker. Yeah, he even yeah, Punk even said he wanted. He's like, hey, let's do it a three way. He's like, I don't even care if you pin me, just put me in the mm -hmm. damn main event. And right, like, nothing. Yeah, yeah. But um, if you ask anyone about that WrestleMania. In people's minds, a lot of people's minds, that match between Punk and Taker was the main event. It's like, yeah. really? Okay, yeah. I dare you to follow that now, you know? And right. But the problem is with, with him going to, you know, WrestleMania and stuff like this and never being in a, in a main event, every time he was done with, like, you know, Taker, The Rock, Cena, whoever – he never had anybody to work with. He'd go back to the story writers and say, "Okay, what's next for me?" And they're like, "Well, I don't, I don't know." He never had anybody to work with. So how can you showcase anybody's talent like CM Punk's talent if you don't have anybody to, for him to go up against? You keep putting him with guys like Ryback, you know? <laughs> yeah, for him to get injured. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. I mean, he got out of. Yeah, I mean. He's a very smart guy. He he seemed to get he he got the short end of the stick during his entire time with WWE. Yeah. And when he first was in the like I don't know, two or three like a few years into the WWE, he was all gung ho about, you know, working. He just wanted to work, get past his injuries and work. He yeah. loved the business. He wanted to work. And that's I think I think Paul Heyman had a big chunk in that too because mm -hmm. you know punk had that passion and uh Heyman took that and ran with it he taught him everything well probably not everything but you know what i mean everything he taught him a lot age. more about the yeah he taught him a lot more about the business than what you know punk's knowledge went the inside the behind the scenes the how inside. to write tv all that mm -hmm. stuff how to time it and everything yeah, yeah that's and, that, and yeah. that, I think, is fascinating, the fact that, you know, yeah. Heyman took the time to do that. Yeah. It wasn't just like, okay, now you guys are going to do this, and you guys are going to do this. And Punk was like, no, yeah. I want to learn, and he, he taught him. Yeah. And, I mean, he was just so sick of everything that was going on What when he was going through – with everything in the WWE and the WWE didn't seem to care. You know, the doctors didn't care. Vince didn't care. Triple H didn't care. Nobody gave a damn about punk. They just kept all. throwing them out there. And they kept throwing them out there to, you know, it's like feeding, you know, it's like feeding meat to the wolves. Yeah. You know, the wolves are going to continue to eat, but the meat is going to get sparse. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, or sparse spares, whatever, yeah. but <laughs> It's going to, you know, you you know, you have like a year supply of meat and you, if you keep f feeding these, this meat out to the wolves, your supply is going to go low. That's what they kept doing to see or punk, yeah. you know, Cena, fuck Cena. But that's what they kept doing to punk <laughs> is they kept, you know, he, he would get injured and Vince would call him and say, Hey bud, how you doing? Hey pal, how you doing? And it's like, dude, whoa, I, I feel for punk. Like, dude, yeah. that was sh that would have shot my anxiety through the roof. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Yeah, you know, yeah. How, how many uh, times listening to this did your 
jaw drop, you know? Oh, just dude, like, countless. <laughs> every, yeah. that's, and every time my jaw dropped, I took notes. Yeah. You know, every time that something went ding, I took notes. Yeah. You know, his, like, you know, his checks started to get lower and lower and smaller and smaller. And, you know, like here, here's one. He said he waited months for his royalty checks. He said he had butt dials for major players in the WWE and butt yeah. texts. He called people back asking about his royalty check two days before his wedding. Like we said, he gets a text from Triple H asking if he had time to talk. He said, I'm always available to talk. And he would talk to him after he got home from his honeymoon. Yeah. And right after his wedding, on his wedding day, he yeah. gets a package from FedEx and in that package was his termination papers. He had been fired. No, he did not quit. He walked away from, you know, the WWE. Yes, but he had a meeting with Vince, and he ba and Triple H was in that meeting too. And he he yes. said, "Look, this is what I'm. This is how I feel. This is what I have on my chest. This is what I have on my plate. I'm clearing it off." And when, you know, he he uh, there was a time where he was asked to work a match with Triple H, I think at some pay-per-view, I think WrestleMania or some stuff, something like that. But That's he, what he, they said down the road in that last meeting. That's what they yeah. said that was going to lead up to. Yeah. Yeah. He, he looked at Triple H and he said, look, I say this with all due respect. I don't want to work with you. Yeah. I don't want to work with you. And he said that Triple H, if, if looks could kill, he said his teeth were clenched he said his he was just he had that vein popping out of his forehead, yeah. and he and was he, pissed. And he said that he said honestly, they never really did ever did see eye to eye. There was always a tension between yeah. the two. Yeah, yeah. He said whenever whenever they were sitting in the same room together, there would be so many negative vibes. And you know, he said Triple H would look at him sideways, yeah. which is crap. Yeah, it's like you know, Triple H is you know good for what he's worth over the years yeah. dx whatever mm -hmm. but you know don't don't sit there when you got a guy as hard working as punk mm -hmm. and sit there and be like oh well i'm better than you no you're not you know yeah. you may be in a higher position but no you're not better yeah right you know he and he he says Another thing is people on social media, um, and even we brought this up on the show. He says that, you know, they, they say that he doesn't talk to anybody from the WWE anymore. And this is his response because they have agendas. Right. Like, and it's not the knock, it, you know, I, it, it's not going to hurt Chris Jericho by him saying, that but people like right. Chris Jericho who have a podcast who want yeah. to put something big like that on his show it's like yeah and Colt but, is, Colt is like I'm doing this for free for you I'm, I'm not getting a penny for this you know right. and that's big of Colt Colt of all people mm -hmm. you know one of his closest friends you know mm -hmm. could get a, a check for this mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. He's like, no, just come on my show when you're ready and do it. And he did. And he even released two parts. This is, there was a second part of this. This they're doing the second part next week. And if you listen to the podcast, you'll find out there. They, I'm not going to do the whole, Oh, this is the email address. No, just listen to the podcast. They give you the mm -hmm. email address to write the questions to punk. If what punk said in this interview was not to your satisfaction or wasn't enough, mm -hmm. then, you know, send him your questions. And if it's, you know, if it's not a straight up, you know, F you or whatever, they'll cover it next week. There'll be a part two for the fans yeah. to go over stuff. I love this too. He says that he got a bunch of tweets right after he left the WWE and people kept calling him a quieter. <laughs> because oh, they, didn't, they didn't know how to spell quitter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and if you if you watch, I don't know, it's on it's on YouTube. You'd have to go look for it. But 
the grammar yeah, thing? I think, yes, yeah. CM Punk's grammar school or something like that. But it is hilarious. You I, need to go watch that. Go on YouTube and, and look up CM Punk grammar. I, if I, you know how to spell grammar, here's, here's a lesson. G-R-A-M-M-A-R. That's grammar. Hey, I, I had one of those, too. I had a grammar hey, and man. a grammar. Hey, man, I spent most of my time on a fucking John Deere, but I know how to spell it. <laughs> Damn. And and I, I, I love CM Punk, and that's one of the reasons why I like CM Punk is because we, me and him, we see eye to eye on the whole grammar thing. I am a huge, huge grammar nazi there's there, huge there, grammar nazi there and there yeah. there your your and your yeah there's yeah. three different meanings you know what two I, two and two there's three different meanings don't quote me on this but i think he did that for nerdist yes i think he did yeah yeah, yeah. he did yeah he did but it, he's, he's still doing stuff for them He's still doing stuff for him, and this is what he wants to do. He wants to bring the comedy routine. You know what? I think he needs to. I think he should be a comedian. He would be hilarious. I'd go pay for one of his comedy shows. Oh God, yeah. He'd be. Oh like, my God. He'd be like. I'm just trying to think of someone quick, somewhat big off the top of my head. That's like so would be a similar style to CM Punk. Because CM Punk, you can tell he does. He's got that attitude about him, but. Here's one, and, and agree to disagree, but I think he, he fits like Louis C.K. Yeah, I can see that. I yeah. The one I was thinking of was like George Carlin. Yes, exactly. George Carlin, uh, uh, oh, the guy that Fluffy, the hell's his name? Yeah, Enrique Iglesias. Well, he's a singer, but. No, that that's um, uh, Julio. No, I was <laughs> That's um, <laughs> Well, Enrique Iglesias is a singer as well. Julio oh, Iglesias. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm not sure who Julio Iglesias is, but that's, uh, that's his. That's his papa. Yeah, but his poppy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Fluffy. If, yeah, whatever his name is, I know who exactly what you're talking. Yeah, about. exactly. The guy that plays Fluffy, I Carlos. No, not Car Carlos Mencia. No, no, it's <laughs> I forgot what his name is. <laughs> you guys will. You guys will probably be watching a video like it's this guy. No, I'm just like sitting here, like ah, uh, shit. It's but, it's it's, th it's three o'clock in the morning and we're doing this. But this is this was big. This was special. This is huge. I mean, if to all the CM Punk doubters, to all the people that said CM Punk quit, go watch, go listen to this this podcast. Go listen to Colt Cabana's podcast. You will be enlightened, deep enlightened. Uh, honestly surprised uh, deeply you you will get a deeper understanding of what punk had to go through and why, listen to the second part why he did what he did yeah I can't wait Absolutely. to hear the second part I, mean, I can't I don't either, know if we're honestly. gonna I don't know if we're gonna hear anything necessarily new or sh more shocking than we heard tonight but you know it, we may I don't know mm -hmm. um, to, to wrap it up um, you know he for all the people that are like always crack the joke, oh, return intimate. Um, he said there is no, just because they, you know, sell some merchandise still, which is mm -hmm. all in the bylines of whatever contract that they worked out, which he didn't want to get into. He couldn't He's, legally. Yeah. He said there is no, I repeat, no working relationship between he and the WWE. He, yeah. he said he will never go back. And I'm like, you know what? Good for him. Especially in light of all the stuff that's come out recently with Alberto Del Rio. You know, mm -hmm. I may not have liked Alberto Del Rio no. while he was on television. But let me tell you something. After all this stuff that came out about him and the racism and the stuff that he had to go through. And when he brought all this to the, to the, <laughs> um, to the light of day. And, yeah. and talked about it, man. It's like, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. You, know, you, you stood up for yourself. And it's that's kinda, exactly what punk did. It's kind of odd that, that punk came out and told everybody what was going on. You mentioned Alberto Del Rio. I want to mention something that I watched on YouTube today. 
right after the show, actually. Because every time I go to YouTube, I type in rambling about rustling. I click on that, I go to the page, and I, I see the videos that, that we posted. Right. But there's always this one video that haunts me. And I'm like, what is this video about? And I've always never watched it. I never watched it. It's 44 minutes long. I'm like, that's just too long for me to watch. <laughs> but, I, but I watched. And this is going yeah. on an hour. <laughs> right. And I've, I, but I watched it. And yeah. this is the, it's, it was Vince McMahon and uh, who was it? It was uh, one of his announcers. I can't remember names right now. But uh, one of them was Bobby Orton. I believe, oh, really? and another one was a different wrestler. This was in 1992, talking oh, wow. about uh, the sexual harassments uh, between wrestlers and Pat Patterson. Oh, man. And the, the homosexuality that was going on in you know the WWE that Vince didn't know about. And you could yeah. tell... Dude, go on YouTube and watch that video. You could tell Vince was super pissed. And this guy, this announcer, just laid it out for him. You know? Yeah. Um, I've heard go, a few things in the past about... Uh, Piper's actually come out about a few things about that, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, Bruno San Martino came out about it. And uh, the Billy Graham, the superstar Billy Graham came out about it, too, on Donahue. Yeah. So if <laughs> remember Donahue. <laughs> yeah, but if you if you uh, if you think about everything, the steroid usage uh, between Hulk Hogan, um, if you think about and, and countless other superstars that Bruno San Martino or no, I'm sorry, Billy Graham brings up on Donahue. If you think about all the drug usage, you think about the the homosexuality through the sexual um, harassment suits. Uh, brought up with the WWF, WWE, uh, and everything else that involves the WWE, you will know what punk is coming from. And this is so important. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned the drug use. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say this, and then I think we're going to wrap this up, because this is going on an hour. And if you're still watching this, God bless you, man, because this hey, is God huge, and, and we had a blast talking about this, but I don't want to have yep. this go on all night. Um, talk about drug use. Mm -hmm. He he mentioned um, uh, talking about people that are, are on their you know second and third strike for drug use, and are still using drugs. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a select few people that we know that have had their second and third strikes and are still working with the company. Yep. And uh, well. <laughs> doesn't take much to research who that is and i'm not going to name any names because i don't want to start a whole new discussion about that but um the fact is that he was in the office with was it triple h mm. i think it was triple h or something like that looked at him and something said oh oh they wanted to they wanted to give uh punk a drug test or a piss oh, they gave or whatever those dave batista they gave dave batista the same p test yeah and I th then they say something like, uh, he asked Triple H, did you take that test? And, and, yeah. And he's, he's, he. Didn't, Sorry, I didn't mean to, yeah. I didn't, didn't mean to mention his name. He, he, no, 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 I'm not, I'm talking about someone else. Oh, okay. Oh, fuck it, I'll say it. It's, uh, Orton. Oh. He, he, he talking yeah. about, you know, two and three strikes and still with the company. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's just an ongoing thing with the WWE. Um, I watched another interview with Vince McMahon and Bob Costas, and they were talking about the XFL, and then they got on a, just a long debate about what WWF was doing back in those days during the Attitude Aggression era. Uh, like Trish Stratus was brought up when he made Trish strip in the middle of the ring and walk around, you know, go, you know, get on all fours, walk around like a dog. But that's that's all storyline based. Uh, 
but that that brings you know that that in, that includes to all the controversy going on in the WWE the the ADR thing the CM Punk thing the the thing back in '92 with the sexual abuse thing back in the '80s with the steroids and Hulk Hogan this has been ongoing I mean the WWE has had so many things uh, brought up in the media that some the media should stay the hell out of some. The media, I guess, should bring up, bring light to this situation. It's, but uh, depending on what it is, they're going to eat it up. De- depending on what it is, the way they went about Warrior was bullshit. But the way that they went about, you know, the whole steroid usage, uh, that you know, that needs to be brought up. Are you talking about Warrior when? Um, Warrior when uh, when he passed away, Nancy Grace made those remarks about you know again oh, the steroids yeah, yeah. and and had DDP on her show. And DDP was just like, "Whoa, I'm getting barraged with with just criticism." Oh yeah, that was that was god awful. Yeah, yeah, oh, that pissed and, off a lot of fans. You know? Yeah. By the way, if you ever watched this, Nancy Grace, big f you. Thanks. Yeah, I, I have zero respect for her because all she, mm-hmm. she 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 follows the Eric Bischoff, and this is nothing against Eric Bischoff, but you know he came up with the thing of how controversy creates cash. Well, she obviously, yeah. you know, goes to bed at night with that posted above her bed. Obviously, obviously. But I know that this video is drawing on, so why don't we go ahead and wrap it up? Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap this um, up. Uh, we'll this... talk more about this. I'm going to send this to the rest of the guys, and I'm going to make them listen to it. And we'll talk more about this on Rambling About Wrestling. Obviously, I won't be on the show. That's why I'm on this video with you. Yeah. But, uh We'll, okay. we'll expect the guys to talk about this because I'm going to draw an issue to this. I'm going to say, hey, bring this up. And yeah, this, I know this deserves to be talked about more. And I it don't does. Know, and I don't know exactly when that next podcast is going to be up, but uh, we, we very well may do a part two about this. Just to touch on the bullet points that, you know, they that the um, fans brought up to CM Punk. We'll see yeah. when it comes up. When, uh, if it's when, worth doing, when, we'll do it. Yeah, on Wednesday, 7 o'clock, uh, youtube.com forward slash rambling about wrestling. They will talk about part one. And then next week, whenever the part two gets released, I'm sure Jason will do a video. And then we'll talk about it on the show on rambling about wrestling. So yeah. make sure you tune yeah. in. So, yeah, this was huge news. This is going to, you know, I even sent a, you know stuff to uh, Steve from RSN saying, hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, um, post this. Do something yeah, with this. Yeah. And, and, and unfortunately, I think he was done for the night. But um, yeah, he'll see he'll, it tomorrow. Oh yeah, he, he'll be up bright and squirrely and jump on it. And this will be yeah. on RSN. This video will be on RSN. Mm-hmm. Um, wherever you're watching this, if you're watching to this long, thank you. I appreciate it. We wanted to do this because it's special. We love CM Punk. We respect yep. him. And whether mm-hmm. you love CM Punk or not. This is certainly going to be an eye-opening thing for you as a fan, a lover or a yeah. hater, when you listen to this podcast that he did with Colt Cabana. Thing is, I want you, we, we both want you to listen to this, all the, and I'm talking to all the CM Punk haters out there. We want you to go and click the link, go to Colt Cabana's podcast, and listen to this, this whole interview with a very, very open mind. Oh, yeah. We don't want you to have a closed mind about anything because I don't think CM Punk would want you to do that. No. W- go listen to this with an open mind. This will bring, uh, and I promise you, we promise you that it'll bring a whole new light on this situation. Yeah, there are things, and like I said when we started this video, Paul Heyman covered just very, very vaguely the basics yep. of why Punk walked away. This is, you know. That, that Paul Heyman thing was just, you know, cracking the door open. And this mm-hmm. was, the door is wide open. This is, this is This it. is what's going on, yeah. This is it, yeah. So, and I want to say publicly to CM Punk, thank you as a fan yep. for finally coming out and saying this. We as fans uh, love you, respect you, and mm-hmm. um, hey, you know, we're glad, we're glad you are happy. And yeah. uh, we still... <sighs> love and respect you for what uh, you do. 110 million percent more respect I have for this man yeah. because of this podcast. Yeah. 
So for this guy, Dizzy, who most graciously stayed up super late to do this with me because I knew it was hey. going to be so special. I'm a wrestling fan. That's the that's the punishment that I will take because I am a wrestling fan and a CM Punk fan, and I know you are too. And thanks for staying up and waiting for me because I'm slow. Oh, no problem. No problem. I, uh, my wife came home late with Thanksgiving dinner stuff, so I had to help her pack some of it away and bring it in the house and whatnot. So <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, and by the way, happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there listening in YouTube land, and uh, yes. happy holidays. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. We have a lot to be thankful for, and we're, we're thankful for all that got revealed to us tonight. Eh? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no so, kidding. So thanks again for watching. We're going to wrap this up, and we'll see you next week, hopefully for part two. Whether it's both of us or just one of us, it'll, it'll be on here. I guarantee it. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Dizzy. Thank you, Jason. We'll see you later. See you next time. Later.